Hello everyone, this is Vipin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, we are going to discuss how to write a test bench code. So I'm going to begin with a very simple test bench. I have the VHDL code for an AND gate. The simplest code maybe you can imagine in your mind. Yeah. So A and B are inputs and uh, C is an output. So C is assigned as A and B, right? So that's the code. So I want to test it, right? Like basically meaning applying inputs at A and B pins and uh, getting the output at C. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's right click here, create new source. And in this uh, Silings ISE, you can create a VHDL test bench, uh, but I'm not going to use it because uh, the point is how to write a test bench. I want to show you how to write a test bench code from scratch, not like editing an already made up one, right? So I'm just going to choose as VHDL module. I'm going to name it as uh, TB underscore and gate, just so that you know that TB stands for test bench. That is just a way of naming it, just so you know and AND gate is the module which you are going to test. You can name it anything, but I try to keep uh, some sense into naming so that uh, anybody can understand what the code is before he can even open it. So next, next, finish. So this is the code which uh, is the template. So these libraries, we don't need it, right? So entity, there are no ports or anything as you, as you can see there are all this input and outputs in our uh, module, but we don't have anything here and that is how it's supposed to be. In a test bench code, there are no, um, no input ports or output ports, right? And these things are, yeah, as normal as in any other VHDL code. So what now we want to do is what we want to test. So we want to test this code, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this thing and I'm going to paste it between the architecture and begin, right? And then I'm going to write component here instead of entity. And here instead of the name of the uh, component, I'm going to just write component, the keyword component. We can instantiate the same thing down here. Sorry. Yeah. We want to test. All right. So how do we do that? So the format for uh, instantiating a component is, so you can <coughs> name the component, the local name in the test bench. Uh, let's call it as UUT, which stands for unit under test. Any name uh, will do. You can even name it like, let's say, and, uh, and gate, something like this, and a colon and then the name of the component which is should be exactly the same as this and then we use the keyword port map bracket and within this brackets put a semicolon there we are gonna assign the input and output points so how we are gonna do that is you can do write a connected to A, pin B connected to pin B and pin C connected to pin C. Notice that the after the last uh, signal there is uh, no colon there okay and you can close it with this closing bracket and semicolon. So we have told the test bench that this is the entity we want to test and then in the after the begin statement we instantiated 
meaning we have connected the local signals inside the test bench into the um, the signals input and output ports in the entity right so now these things we should um, declare within the test bench because uh, right now the test bench doesn't know what this a this b and this c is which is different right we are going to declare them so signal a comma b comma c standard logic just let's uh, initialize them to zero it's good to initialize uh, the local signals in the test bench so i made it standard logic because it's a standard logic type right so that's done now everything is connected and to test the design we have to of course apply the inputs so that is what we are going to do next so this can be done uh, inside a process statement so just for uh, easier like just for clarity let's uh, name the process we can write it as um, stimulus process colon the keyword process and then begin keyword let's end it end process and in between here we are going to apply the inputs so a and b are two uh, standard logic signals so it can have a combination of four total four sets of inputs can be applied right so let's say a is zero and in the same time b is zero okay and then what we can do is we can wait for let's say 100 nanosecond just anything will do all right similarly we need to apply more input combinations so i'm gonna do it three more times so that we have total four sets so zero 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 one next is one zero and then one one which covers all the input combinations right so that's it and at the end inside the process we can give a wait signal so that otherwise what it happens is it will go through all this after 400 nanosecond it will restart from the top we don't want to do that right so we just wait so that uh, it uh, the system for our waits in this state so now the test bench is done let's uh, try simulating it right so you can click here make sure the simulation radio button is clicked here ICM simulator behavioral checks index okay that's good let's simulate it okay so it's highly let's reduce the resolution so we can zoom out i am scrolling down by clicking control but you can also click on this zoom out button to do this okay a little bit zoom in okay so we can see that a b and output c are there so 0 0 results in 0 0 1 results in 0 again 1 0 results in 0 and only 1 1 results in 1 so you can see that uh, the test bench code is working as well as you can see that the unit under test which is our AND gate is working as well so sometimes you need to see uh, like the internal signals if there are many signals you want to see what is happening inside the AND gate inside the component you are testing so what you can do is you can click under this instance and process name you can select the component if there are multiple components they will all appear here you can click on that and it will show you those particular signals so you can select them one or everything and then just drag and drop it here so these signals which you see are different from these so these are from the test bench you can see that how when you when i just keep the mouse on top of that you can see tb and gate 
and A. And but if you over the mouse here, it's TB AND gate. Within that, the AND gate component, and within that, the signal A. So there is a different difference is there. Okay. So one thing I want to show you is that if you go to our test bench code, uh, this is the signal, the, the local signal, right? And this signal doesn't have to have the same name as the component signal, which is this. So just to show you that, let's name it as A1, B1, and C1. Let's change it here, A1, B1, C1, here also. Okay, let's uh, simulate this. Okay, zoom out. So you can see that the local signals are A1, B1 and C1 and uh, the AND gate is working. And if you go and see the signals within the component AND gate, they remain the same as A, B and C. And uh, you can see how they are differently named, right? So I guess that's about it in this video. And I want to show you how to write test bench code for a, a cloaked component, like a component with a clock, but that could be in the next video. All right. Thank you. And please make sure you like this video. And if you are interested in more of these kind of videos, subscribe to my channel, write a comment on what kind of videos you want to see, because these things uh, keep me uh, motivated to write uh, more videos. All right. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.